Um, I'm Liz Robinson. I direct the Energy Coordinating Agency of Philadelphia, and we are really uh, thrilled to be able to host this project and this press conference this morning. Um, I'm going to just introduce the project to you. Um, this is the Energy Fit Philly project, and the purpose of Energy Fit Philly is to essentially revitalize entire blocks in low-income neighborhoods across Philadelphia. Our specific goal in this project is to double the energy savings that we normally get in our weatherization programs and to do it in homes that we are currently rejecting for weatherization because the homes are so severely deteriorated. Um, the, the goal of, of the project is to leave homes durable, healthy, and affordable for low-income homeowners and renters across the city. Um, and to do that, we're using new technologies. One of them um, we're demonstrating here on this, the spray foam truck is open cell spray foam, which has never been used before in roof insulation in the city. It's a product that's manufactured right outside of Philadelphia by CertainTeed. Um, and this open cell spray foam is, we hope, going to double the energy savings in the roof cavity. So the home right behind me is one of the homes that we've completed so far. But we're hoping to do about 28 homes on this block. Um, and the goal of doing the whole block, because all row homes are actually connected, think of it as one big building with party walls. And so if we can improve the energy efficiency of the whole block, everyone will benefit more. So we're, it's a way of maximizing the energy savings. So how did we pick this block? We held a contest, a citywide contest, and I want to thank um, John Bowie and O from Serenity House, which is um, on Lehigh Avenue, for bringing this block to our attention. And this block won the citywide contest, um, and um, we're thrilled to be able to work with them. This is a block with a lot of community leadership. Um, Ms. Darlene Pope, who's um, around me somewhere. Where is Darlene? There she is. See? She's a community organizer. She can't stop organizing. Um, so what we're doing in these homes is repair first. Um, we start with the roof and the outside of the house and work in. And um, so every house is a little different, but we are repairing and then uh, weatherizing these homes. And we're uh, also providing a white, highly reflective white roof coating so that the home is cooler in the summer as well as warmer in the winter. So we're trying to double year-round energy savings. And I really have to thank all the funders. Um, the first funder in was the Oak Foundation, and that was matched by a really generous grant from the City of Philadelphia, the Housing Trust Fund. Um, we also brought in our normal weatherization assistance program, which is funded by the federal government, and local utilities, both PGW and P P uh, WD, better known as the Water Department, have contributed to the project. So we're thrilled to be able to do this, and we hope that the lessons that we've learned here can be brought across the city to improve the housing and energy connection. And without any further ado, it's my great honor to introduce to you Council President Daryl Clark. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, I will be brief because it's a little warm out here this morning. Um, Liz, I, I want to thank you uh, not only for today, but thank you and your organization for all the work that you've done every year dealing with the LIHEAP applications and all the other th aspects of providing uh, support for our residents. And Deb has been working, we've been working with her forever, and uh, I really appreciate what you've done. You know, you're one of those folks that behind, behind the scenes, but you just get it done. We get to stand up first and speak, right? You know, but the reality is the work is done there. So I just want to congratulate you and thank you so much. <laughs> all your work. Um, you know what, this, about, Deborah was there about maybe a little over a year ago. We had a big announcement. We were talking about the city of Philadelphia was going to embark on a program to build 2,000 new homes within three, four-year period. And we were quite excited. New construction, 
uh, affordable market rate, uh, workforce housing, and we continue to move towards that goal. But there was one component that we, we forgot to put in that book. We got the pretty little slick document. Is what about the people that already live in these neighborhoods, right? We got to pay some attention to those people, right? Because the simple reality is these are folks who have stayed in these communities, folks who have gone through the tough times and committed to their communities, maintaining their block. And the city of Philadelphia has to figure out a way working with our nonprofit partners and all of the foundations and come up with an aggressive strategy to make sure that we come up with a preservation and a cost reduction uh, initiative on a broader level so we don't have to have a contest because it will be available to everybody. So I'm going to stand here today, all right, and I'm going to figure out a way to get myself in trouble, but I'm going to commit to that today as we deal with the with the administration and the next administration, that's going to be on our list as it relates to some of the things that we need to do. So we get, need to get a little more creative and effective. And the other thing you referenced, the reality is that one of the catch words now is this whole issue about income inequality. And you know, you say, well, how do you fix that? And one is obviously getting people appropriately educated for the appropriate job and thereby increasing their incomes. But the thing that we don't talk nearly about is reducing the cost of living, right? lowering taxes and doing all of the other things and doing something like this, reducing the cost of energy is so important because the reality is for every dollar that you save as a result of these types of programs, that's a dollar that you can spend for something else that you can put in, put in the bank or you can spend towards a college education for your child. So this is extremely important. So again, uh, as we talk about uh, income inequality, we're going to talk about a way that we can aggressively reduce the cost of living as it relates to energy. Um, so I, I, I want to thank you so much, and I want to thank the neighbors, um, my good friends uh, who have toughed it out uh, and done what they had to do. Um, feel good to be able to stand here and say we finally got to the block. So Connie told me a little while ago, you finally got here. Um, this is something that we're going to do, and we're going to do quite aggressively. So again, thank all of you guys, John, and all the guys for the wonderful work that you've been doing, and we look forward to expanding this program quite aggressively. So we're going to make that commitment right here today. So again, congratulations, and thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to introduce Deborah McCullough. She probably needs no introduction. She's an absolute uh, legend here in Philadelphia for all the work that she's done uh, around affordable housing for many, many years. Deb McCullough. Thank you so much. It's scary to be thought of as a legend. But uh, I just want to say I'm delighted to be here today. One of the pr biggest priorities of the Office of Housing and Community Development is to prevent homelessness by keeping people in their houses. Preserving affordable housing is one of our top priorities. And in our regular program, the Basic Systems Repair Program that we've committed $10 million to of community development block grant funds, even with $10 million, we have a four-year waiting list. That that's just the reality. That's because, you know, the need is like this and the resources are like this. So when we have a special program like this that we've supported with half a million dollars from the Housing Trust Fund through a request for proposals where we asked for innovative ways to help preserve housing, we were delighted to support ECA's proposal to, for Energy Fit. It's a great combination of how you make repairs and weatherize houses in an effective way with a new technology that we're trying. It's a, great, it's a great thing to have that sort of flexible money with the Housing Trust Fund where we can do innovative new things. And it's a way to sustain the, the energy savings so that as, as the council president mentioned, the families that are living in these houses that get this treatment have their energy costs reduced. That gives them money to do other things, which is a great thing. So I am delighted that we could support this program with the Housing Trust Fund, and we hope that the Housing Trust Fund will continue to grow so that we can continue to support this program and other programs like that. So thank you all for inviting me to be here today for this celebration. It's a great day. First of all, I thank everyone for showing up. This has been a great experience for me and for my block, and we are definitely overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the work, the progress that it has been taking place, but I kind of want to give a couple of shout outs. I want to give a shout out to a guy named John. John came through and said, well, put, we're going to give you an application. 
you know, it's a contest. Apply for it. I had to work in the winter. I didn't like that, you know, going to all the homes and whatnot. But however, it came together. We never expected so much love and attention from everyone. We just kind of, you know, we feel good. We feel honored. My whole block feel honored. My community feel honored. And I really want a lot of the social, I mean, a lot of the block captains to come in and get the same treatment. I want to spread the love. <laughs> I want to spread the love. I want to give thanks to all the um, people such as Chuck and all the workers. I mean, they talked about my roof, y'all. I want y'all to know, but I love my roof. <laughs> but however, um, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank um, Clark for coming, Daryl Clark. I want to thank each and every one. I am overwhelmed. Y'all can't begin to know how I feel, and I can't express it enough. So I just want to thank you, and I command y'all. Let me give y'all a clap instead, okay?